joined by General Manager of the Utah Jazz, Justin Zanuck. It's been a while since we talk, and a lot has happened. Good to see you, JP. Thank you so much for taking the time. It's been a transformational offseason. Um, why go in this direction? What makes this the right uh, decisions for the Utah Jazz? So you can tell by the our choices this summer, um, every deal that we've done this summer has been consistent to uh, – you know, add more assets, uh, add some young players here uh, to open up, you know, a new window of, of competition um, and with the with the goal to win a championship. I think, you know, from ownership, the community, um, all of our decisions over the last three years have been trying to give the Jazz every opportunity to win a title. And over the past three years, we've accomplished a lot won a lot of games, but we haven't quite been able to reach the mountaintop. And that realization um, that we decided to go in a different direction where we can open up a higher ceiling for our team. And and these moves reflect that. Um, I'm really excited about uh, the players that we've acquired, uh, the flexibility that we have. And uh, with Coach Hardy here, it's gonna be a culture of work. It's gonna be an exciting product going to play hard um, and give something the fans can can look forward to now and into the future. Let's go into the Donovan Mitchell trade. How does that come about? Where does it start? How does this deal get across the line? So with any you know negotiation or just it really starts with team conversations. Um, teams calling, you know, always have called about your best players and listening to see if there's the time that makes sense, a deal that makes sense. Um, a lot of back and forth. It, it took a long time with multiple teams. Um, but finally, we got to a place where we felt in the best, you know, the best for our organization going forward was to, to move Donovan to Cleveland and the return that we got with Colin Sexton and Larry Markinen and Ochai Baji, three young guys that we think can, we can take forward. And obviously the, the picks and swaps with the flexibility that, that offers us also put Donovan in a very competitive situation. Cleveland's going to be very good, much like we did with Royce O'Neal and with uh, Rudy. So I'm glad that was able to work out as well. Um, but it was sort of the capstone of this summer with all of the deals that we've done to give us a great base to build from. How about those players? Colin Sexton, a known scorer in this league. Larry Markkinen. He's a big who was playing the three with the Cleveland Cavaliers and then Ochai Abaji, a player that nobody really knows because he was in college last year. Yeah, so Colin, you know, has already, you know, he's still only 22 years old and has already had four years in the league um, and has shown to be an excellent scorer, a tough young player, plays hard. Um, already being around him, I can tell that he's one of those guys that never has a bad day, loves to be in the gym, loves to engage in the community. Um, I think he's a good teammate uh, already, him being here in, on the court once the physicals were done and engaging with the staff and teammates. He, he brings a, a very positive vibe here, um, much like Ochai as well. Ochai obviously is a rookie, but most outstanding player in the Final Four, won a national title, has get, continued to get better every year. Um, another guy with a very positive outlook that will be great in the community. Um, and we're hoping to, you know, Coach Hardy and his staff, who uh, I think they have a very good player development intent, can help Ochai grow in this league and, and be a longtime player in this league. And then Lowry, um, you know, he's somebody that we've always watched for a long time, uh, still very young as well at, at only 24. Um, and he is just playing unbelievable right now in the FIBA Eurobasket, uh, just upset Croatia, um, scoring 43 points. And so an established four man with positional size who can dribble, pass and shoot, which is always good. And uh, we're really excited once he's done with Eurobasket uh, to come over here and join us and uh, we'll get him settled very quick. You're watching a lot of Eurobasket. A lot now. in the morning. I'm sure. Yes. And, and tape delay, but yes, a lot. Simone Fontecchio, the new signing from Italy. Uh, what stood out for him as a player that you wanted to bring into the program? So Simone, uh, another guy who's just playing great in Eurobasket. He's, was, in our opinion, probably the best player in Europe last year. Um, still entering the prime of his career at 26 and has a game that I think translates here. 
You know, he's a he's a big forward that can score at three levels. Uh, is a good teammate, can really shoot, and uh, has it has a work ethic. Um, so, I'm always excited when when players decide to pick up from their home countries and and come to the United States. It's a big deal. I, I think people don't realize how hard that can be. Um, and we'll do our best to get him settled, but he's already played at a high level, um, has credentials, and we're excited to add him. When unlike Lowry Markkinen, he doesn't play; he doesn't have the advantage of playing college basketball. He was always overseas, picking up and leaving your homeland to come here at 26. I'm sure that's that's wild. And where does he get on your radar to even be someone that you could? So our scouting staff, it's um, it's something we have to scout in all parts of the world. So. We've known about Simone for a long time, uh, followed him even when he was playing under 18s in Italy and have just continued to watch him grow. Um, this was an open window where uh, he and his representatives thought it was the best time to try to make the leap. It was also a contract window for him to be able to do so. And with where we were going with our team to you know, add a, a player that has something to prove over here, um, still in his prime and a player that we could take forward. So. We pride ourselves on trying to, you know, take shots at guys that we believe in that have high character, that have a high skill level, and that want to be here. Um, we'll do that six times and twice on Sundays. So, so it's exactly like the movie Hustle, where he goes, Adam Sandler goes overseas, finds somebody, and then brings. Probably him. a little less okay fun, but yes, it's another transaction. Patrick Beverly and yields. Talon Horton Tucker, Stanley Johnson, what are they bringing to the team? So Talon, um, another very young player still, has a few years in the league, and he's still only 21. Um, very interesting measurables, uh, very good with the ball in his hands, still has developmental upside, and uh, we're excited to add him uh, with our group of guards so that he provides a different element that we don't have. And I think for him it's a, it's a new opportunity. Um, to be in a different organization, a different system, um, hoping to maximize his talents. And, you know, as soon as that trade was done, he's been here the entire time uh, working out and getting to know our coaches. So I'm very impressed with that. Stanley, you know, obviously a former top 10 pick in the, in the, the draft, um, still, still very young at 25, 26, and uh, a big forward that, you know, has shown some ability as a defender. Um, his shot has improved. We'll hope to get that a little better. But another guy that really likes to work um, has had a reputation of being a good t teammate. He's been great here, too. He's actually on the court right now or was just before this. And uh, I'm just really excited to get the, to get to know these guys and uh, have them be part of our program. How in concert is this with Coach Hardy, the front office, ownership, everything working together so that they could Yeah, everything, everything's course. been in lockstep. Um, trying to help and support coach as he implements a, a culture and a culture of work um, with players that, you know, want to work and have something to prove and that are coachable and high character. Um, and I think we've accomplished that. Uh, coach has been in part of every part of these decisions as well as obviously ownership. And so, you know, the culture and the vibe around here is really good. Um, it's fun coming to work every day. Uh, with, the, with the new people that are getting acclimated here. Uh, obviously, you know, this community and state is something that I'm a huge fan of, and I'm starting year 10 here. So uh, grateful to be here. And uh, this new start with uh, and kind of makeover of the organization, it's been fun. How would you describe jazz culture to someone who's just coming off the street? I think in the press release for the most recent transaction, hard-nosed was something that left out on the page. When yeah, I saw absolutely. I, I think, you know, and Coach Hardy has said this in his press conferences, this is going to be a culture of work. I think when you come to the to Vivint and see our team play, you're going to see us play hard, play together, play smart. It'll be a younger team, um, but having them play together to help learn each other um, as they get acclimated, I think they'll all be great in the community. And our veterans that are on our team right now, you know, Jordan Clarkson and Mike Conley and Boyan, uh, those guys will also come and help. You know, they're outstanding, high-character guys that can help some of these young guys along as well. So we're excited to have them back as well. 
Um, I think it's going to be a product that jazz fans can see the progression and be proud of the product that we're putting on the floor for them. You excited for it? I'm, I'm so excited. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to following the team. Justin Zanuck, General Manager of the Utah Jazz. Thank you so much. Thanks, JP.